What is up, bros? Josh here. In today's video, we're going over some furious gameplay of the Tier 6 Royal Navy CV. And I've been having a lot of fun with this CV. I've been playing the Ranger a lot on my alt account, and we just picked up this through the Fly Strike Win event. So I thought I'd be playing both of those and kind of compare them a little bit. Um, but really, the Furious uh, can be a, a force to be dealt with. In this game, too, we had some pretty good matchmaking on a map I love, but we are middle tier, so we have some high AA ships that have to deal with, a couple of Ganais Nals in Atlanta here and there, but overall, a bunch of ships that we can go for. And so with this ship, we're going to have the normal rocket planes, the torp bombers, and then the new carpet bombers. These ones, um, a lot of people have been having some tough times with, and I've been seeing them be pretty successful against battleships. Other than that, they've been having a little trouble to do some damage um, against some other stuff, but overall been enjoying this uh, ship a lot and the CB playstyle in general. Now, at the time of recording this video, you could still get the Furious through the Arsenal in the three-tiered process through the Fly Strike Win event. So if you go into the Arsenal, click on the Fly Strike Win, what you will have is the options of both buying the Bundle 1, which will give you the Tier 4 Hermes, plus some bonuses, Tier 2, the Furious, and then Tier 3, the Bundle 3, the Implacable. So what you have to do is buy the Hermes first with the both crowns and florins can the currencies for the event and then once you have the first one you can buy the second one which is how you do it so this will give you a preview of the ship itself and then obviously once the line is released you will be able to get it this way so throughout this video this is what i'm using for both the modules and my captain skill for the modules, I'm using air, air group modification one, so speed of air group returning to the aircraft. I want to get those planes as fast as possible. And then auxiliary armament, it's just, I don't really feel like it's worth it. Yeah, maybe you'll get struck a little bit, but I just don't think it's worth it in the end. So this is a basic, an easy one for me. Same with number two, aircraft engine mod one. I feel like this is another easy one to pick compared to damage control system. Unless you want to be hyper aggressive, I just don't see anything being better than air uh, aircraft engine mod one right here. Now, this one is obviously up to the person um if you want to make a more aa build sure you can well that's secondaries but aa build you guess you could but torpedo bombers or uh attack aircraft i'm liking the attack aircraft but obviously you can um do the torp bombers i feel like the torp bombers is kind of fine um but uh i mean if you want to drop them from farther away they tend to be relatively quick so this is kind of just nice right there and then for those last one i am taking die bomber uh h a p so this is kind of up to you as well and what you want to have a little bit more, obviously, torpedo. I mean, these are all good. Obviously, probably attack aircraft the first one, not so much, but um, torpedo or dive bombers. Uh, and again, if you want to increase torp bomber right here and double that up, you can. I feel like dive bombers are kind of nice. It is the carpet bombers. That's up to people if they like that Kyle, that style of play. Um, I like the, having a little bit of health on those right now. I might end up changing those in the future, but that's what I'm running right now. Then on the captain, a very simple 10-point captain. Now, this is something I actually talked about on my stream as well, about the idea of just completely negating this point right now uh, for four points. This is just what I'm running for this video. Um, the first one, I am taking improved engine boost. I like getting around as fast as possible and getting those fast strikes in. Improved engines, obviously, this is another really good one. Uh, with the torpedo acceleration too, that would be kind of nice. I'll get that later. And then I am picking up survivability to get that little bit of HP per tier, which is really, really nice. Uh, I think definitely picking up aircraft armor would be nice as well as picking up demo expert. It would be really, really nice. So slight site stabilization. This is just kind of nice to get in and out and kind of get those attacks in and be as accurate as possible. The idea of dropping this for maybe demolition expert or even the survivability of aircraft armor if you are seeing a lot of tier eights or just high AA ships this is definitely worth it maybe dropping this for these but throughout the video this is what i'm taking so probably as a 10 point captain i have nine more so i'll probably pick up aircraft armor demo expert um torpedo armament which will get me to 18 and then probably either um probably i would go with uh maybe maybe air supremacy getting that restoration time this is also can be kind of clutch too but um probably air supremacy for the 19 point but this is what i'm running for the furious game itself let's dive back into the gameplay overall though just sending out some first uh as we try to get some damage in try to get some damage in on this perth obviously i guess we're not gonna be able to see all of that but we will drop some uh dive bombers or some uh, carpet bombers there and this one actually took me a while to get used to um, because I've been playing so much Ranger. If you have played a Ranger compared to the Carpet Bomber, Ranger you kind of drop early and then kind of sweep into it. And with, the, with how it aims, but with the actual 
uh, carpet bombers themselves, basically where the aiming reticle is, that's where you're going to drop it. So you don't need to lead it early because of how the dropping mechanic works. Um, but it's still though, just trying to get in, use the speed of these planes, because for tier six, these are actually pretty quick. So as you see, I'm kind of just scouting this out as well as lighting things on fire. I thought maybe I could uh, get some cheeky damage in on the CV and then maybe force repair and then come back at him. But uh, uh, overall, just trying to just get some ideas of where these juicy battleships and juicy tier fives are, like where the Fusa is, where the Congo is, stuff like that that's pretty easy to drop. And it, I think I probably missed that. Yeah, I remember I think I even said, I was like, ah, uh, what am I doing? I think I even dropped um, this one. Maybe I get the turn off? I don't think I, I didn't think I did. But um, I was so used, I had played maybe like 15 Ranger games in a row before I'd come back and played the Furious. So I was surprised. It'd been a while since I had kind of seen the testing focus. But mainly with this, you'll see me kind of switch back and forth between the Torp Bombers and the Carpet Bombers. Torp Bombers, Carpet Bombers, Torp Bombers, Carpet Bombers. And uh, really only kind of hit those those actual rocket, the strike uh, planes, if I need them to against DDs. They are extremely accurate, but not very efficient from what it looked like. Um, but overall, though, uh, trying to focus on the uh, mass. And the thing is, these torp bombers aren't extremely fast. But if you can catch maybe the mass um, on a turn or a very slow, especially if he's smoking up, you can maybe get him. So I'm trying to help this Akatsuki Indianapolis King George out just a little bit. So I thought I'd maybe make a quick little drop here and see if we can help him out um since he is kind of slowing down so getting a bit of a lead right there and uh we'll see if we snag him i think we actually get him a little bit on one of these and again anytime you can find a tier five and a tier six that's always worth a drop and runners may fire something too bad here but uh been really enjoying the tier six i even enjoyed the hermes a decent amount yeah i thought we ended up missing them it's really hard to drop on a, a dd with this without having torpedo reload and pick it on this poor Omaha. He is flooding as well. And uh, one thing I definitely did notice too is it seems like the Furious has a much higher flood chance than the Ranger. I would go a like an entire game without getting any floods um, with the Ranger, but with this, uh, it seems to be getting a little bit higher chance. I don't know what the actual chance is compared as I get another flood and almost 20,000 damage so far. So not a bad start. A few, uh, some games in there. We got some damage in as well, trying to figure out where these DDs are. And that's one thing that's taken me a while to deal with, with the play style of these new CVs is old CVs, I would be focusing DDs almost entirely, wait for them to get killed off. Once they're killed off, then focusing other stuff. This, I'm focusing more on battleships and lone, kind of lone wolf uh, ships. And we go down a couple uh, ships here as well. I think we lost an Omaha, which really isn't losing too much. And then we lost an Agato, so a bit of a bummer. But the worst part is that Atlanta is holding down the middle with the Gnais now, as well as having that Fuso Gnais now Karav. That's a lot of H uh, uh, AA to deal with. But one thing we're just looking for right here as we lose another ship. So this was a bit of a, a comeback story right now. But um, what we're looking for is looking for those isolated ships. So always looking at your mini map. And I think this is a terrible lead up. Oh, this is the this is the carpet bomber. That's why. And so, still still getting used to these compared to the ranger. Yes, uh, I swear I know what I'm doing. I swear I know what I'm doing. And um, luckily the moss is pretty low over there too. But coming in, trying to force those repairs because really what you're trying to do is stack those dots, get that drop, force the repair on him, do a little bit of extra damage is always good. I think he was probably since I think that's the. The battle show. Oh, no, he's with the Fuso actually. Um, but tier 7A shredness right there, missing our first drop, but that's on us. But the team's doing a really good job at kind of um, holding down the entire area. There's a lot of AA I have to deal with. And again, switching over to the AP. But that Atlanta, if that Atlanta gets kind of worked down, then I can work on a lot of stuff and I can really kind of start beating up this team a little bit because if I can slow down those battleships and get some. Uh, floods and fires on them then I can really help out the team and I try to help out this uh, division here I think we had a division of a Sharnhorst and a Haida so both are really good ships so I figured I would help out the Haida a little bit try to force some damage on him uh, with these torp bombers but I saw this Fuso and the uh, the Duke was I was hoping he could take some damage but the Fuso right here I was trying to drop a little bit early maybe help this out and slow down this push and then I see that the Krab as well as the Koenig drop a little bit early and um, try to avoid that AA because that is nasty and then help out with this uh, Akatsuki. But 
Um, there's that there's that flap from the Atlanta. So Konigsberg, I was like, oh, easy peasy. He'll definitely do it. He'll definitely get that kill. Uh, he'll just shoot his guns and and kill the Akatsuki. But as we all know, you gotta get those torps off. <laughs> and <laughs> not a, a shot was not found, but we will be able to drop on him. Luckily, we came back, and uh, the Akatsuki had no engine, and we can drop on him as well. I think we end up snagging him too. Um, with at least one so I think we get him yeah we got him with one and the flood so really three three for five isn't too bad but uh, I think this is the first time too yeah we grabbed the rockets as well these are extremely accurate but I found that the damage for me hasn't been too high so it's kind of just really a filler plane it seems like um, getting some information yes they are extremely fast um, but against destroyers obviously they're gonna do a lot of damage um, but against everything else, it's nothing too crazy. But still, checking off the map right now. Uh, we're down pretty heavily. Just trying to get the cheeky in the smoke uh, in the smoke drop. So nothing we can really do there. And trying to bail from the Ganais now. I'm hoping maybe our Leander can do this. I think at this point, I was just like, man, I'm going to try to save some damage and just get as much XP as I can. Um, try to help out with this Fu. So let's just kind of chill on here because our Leander is going down. Kind of everything's going down. And... Uh, in goes so the rockets really aren't too bad accuracy wise it's just the damage that's pretty poor um but this though we have our torp bombers and the torps seem to load pretty quickly our sharni is going in luckily that atlanta is still well unluckily it's still alive but luckily it is taking some big damage and our um and our indie can actually do some damage to them our sharni goes beast mode right here and we're actually gonna drop that they killed the atlanta which is fantastic it's really like kind of the problem child uh, that we were having and if we can help out this Ganai, we're gonna drop some danger close torps here um, But if we can help out this Ganai or the Sharn horse kill the Ganai, then we are in a really good spot and Luckily using our speed boost effectively here just helping him out because he's slow enough We should be able to get these torps and the hideout on the other side too is getting some damage in and I think we might have been a tad behind there. I think we sang him on the butt with that Akatsuki's uh, shooting, yeah, we missed him just barely. So I was a little worried that I was gonna hit our Sharni, but we just had to help him out at that point. And again, four for seven on the flood, not too bad. And not today, dead Akatsuki. And we're gonna drop that and kind of get this game back in our favor. Um, we are pretty low health wise, uh, but right there we got our 40,000 damage, 43, almost 44. And we got our first kill. So the rest of the map, though, really isn't too terrible for us AA-wise. Obviously, Ryujo is going to have its fighters. We have to be careful about that. Ganai is now is a high AA ship. That's a bit of a bummer. But we have the Perth, the Karab, the Congo, and the Fuso. All of those are very manageable when it comes to AA. Uh, Arcan now though, not the best spot, or not the highest AA ship, but we're starting to move our CV and get our CV into a bit more of an offensive spot. Now, it is really nice, and that obviously I know this isn't the best thing to do here, but we want to pop out some damage if we could. It's always best to drop from either behind or in front. Obviously, in front is the best, because behind you will be going through the entire AA. So this is uh, much preferred right here. Because um, you'll get the entirety of it and be in the AA as, 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 as little as possible. Again, I think... <laughs> okay. Uh, I know I'm not the best one right now. Um, this was a nice little warm-up game, but we got better as the time goes on. That's one thing I've noticed. Uh, I really appreciate that um, the CVs are different. Uh, the play styles are different and there's different drops. But my god, if you spend any time in one and then go and, and play the other... It takes a while to bounce from one to the other. It, it, like, imagine playing the Atlanta all day and then having to play, um, or playing the Moskva all day and then having to go to, let's say, like, the North Carolina. The lead, or the Atlanta, the lead is so different, and it takes a long time to really get used to. But, so, uh, not as I'm trying to say, the Ganai's now is my biggest problem, but we can drop on the Sfuso and the Congo. They are awkwardly spread out enough, and I figured what I would do right here is help out our Sharn Horse again. Our Sharn Horse is trying to go beast mode against these guys and help him with his biggest threat. So the Ganai's now is going to have Torps. I figured I'd try to help him, help him out as much as possible. And I couldn't quite get here in time, but thought I'd give him the fighter as well. One thing I'm also looking forward to on a lot of the uh, upcoming CVs is the ability for those CVs to have um, 
a more defensive play style. That'll be really, really cool, actually. To maybe, like, go around and help out the team. So, we'll protect him a little bit, our Sharni, as much as we can. But we did get the Flood, too, which is fantastic. And uh, we'll drop this so we know he doesn't have to repair. And that's fantastic. That's, that's really, really good for us. So, if we get a Sticky Flood or a Sticky Fire, uh, luckily we, unluckily we didn't right there. But we did get a situation where he is not going to be able to move too much. Unluckily for us, the Sharn Horse went down, but uh, we can still pump in some damage on this Ganai. Looks like he's still burning from the fire on him, so we can start finishing. So this is actually looking pretty manageable. Um, we have two DDs, which is fantastic. Now, one thing we haven't seen in a long time is the Perth, and um, so that's one thing that I've kind of gotten used to, so I, you can't really see it, but I had moved up um, the my ship to go this way. Actually, I'd, I think I had moved up to go this way and then curl around. I had moved this way now. Um, again, I know this isn't the best, but we're trying to get that one fire if we can because he's stationary and has no repair. Again, you want to do it north. Oh, they, I'm actually have the rockets and I got super lucky on a double fire and now triple fire on him. So that's pretty awesome. Again, kind of going to ignore um, kind of going to ignore the Congo and just focus on the Fuso because the Fuso, if these guys get detected or something like that, and I think this Fuso must have been full AA or something because he was just shredding my planes. Fuso not really known for its AA. Um, and the Fuso is with the uh, Ryujo, so I imagine he was probably some kind of AA spec. Um, so I was trying to think Hey, if these two guys can deal with the Fuso, then I can focus on the Congo because we're still down. And I'm probably going to have to deal with the Perth myself. Um, so I figured what I'd do right here, and as you can see right there, uh, my aircraft is detected. So it's nice to get a little... I, I thought I'd start putting some pressure on the cap. That's why I'm moving to where I am. And one thing we do is... That's what I'm worried about right there is our Akatsuki getting spotted. Luckily, the Perth wasn't as aggressive as I thought. Um, wasn't in a spot to that. I am still going to be taking some damage, but it won't be too terrible. And what I'm trying to do right here is get a couple drops in. And um, a couple drops in, try to help them out. Because if they do that, then they can rotate and then start putting some pressure on that Congo. Because our Akatsuki is in a fantastic spot. And so trying to help them finish this out and then focus on everything else. For having a couple high A ships, we were able to do a decent amount. And again, we got the Torps out. And then we're going to start focusing on this Perth. And we end up snagging that. He's going to eventually go down. Actually, we could have got that kill too if we were rolled just a tad higher. And the Akatsuki, Akatsuki can rotate down. So I'm kind of really focusing on doing two things right now. One, spotting the Perth. Two, spotting the Congo. And three, giving our uh, DDs fighters if I potentially can and keeping them safe. Um, this is where the rockets are going to be amazing though. And I figured I would try to do some quick strikes on this guy. Get some fires. Get some... Uh, you know, smashes whatever and do as much damage as I can. So this is when the rockets are really nice. Again, light armored cruisers. Even the superstructures of battleships, some decent fire chances. And then uh, dropping them on DDs as well. Very accurate when I was playing it and I really kind of enjoyed that. But again, it really does kind of seem like the filler um, on these rockets is what you're kind of focusing on. But super, super accurate. Um, we get three, I think we get three, three strikes on this, so just in that little bit, that's like 4k damage, no fires though, and uh, I, think, I figured might as well not drop that, I don't think we would have got it in time, and so he's slowing down, so I was getting him to move, saw that, and so we switched out to torque planes, I'm basically taking torque planes on these Royal Navy cruisers, or CVs as much as possible, and, um, and I was, uh, trying to yeah i was trying to get this uh this guy to use smoke because i didn't want him to yolo and i would have spotted the, the the planes for him but he's still focused on me and luckily he tries to slow down a lot we read that kind of like a book and we're gonna end up getting this perth g g easy so pretty dang good right there actually uh, i felt a lot more comfortable doing that than i would in the ranger and instantly we're into a pretty good spot right here 100k damage three kills um, 18 tour pits, seven floods so far. Really kind of feeling good. I feel a lot more comfortable in the in the Furious than I did in the Ranger. Haven't really messed around with the Ryujo that much. I have noticed that a lot of people are liking the Ryujo compared. I'm honestly enjoying the Ranger. Just the downside is that it seems like just teams tend to die a tad quick, and it takes a while. Um, it takes a while for uh, for your damage to really build up. As you saw, probably in the first 10 minutes, I had about 40,000 damage, and then the last uh, a few minutes I've had about a 60k more 
and so really kind of dragging that out a couple more torque bits right there too roll pretty low though only 8k well, actually that's not too bad and um really kind of dealing with a congo and a uh usual the rest of this game so only three minutes left and our dds are kind of rolling there trying to help these guys out if i can um because they're both super low um that's one thing i was kind of worried about too i'm talking to the haida so our haida played extremely well our shanghai's played well akatsuki played really well so look at these this dream team double dd um that's kind of what you want honestly in our situation was double dd cv versus uh cv in a battleship so not too bad we got a little lucky that their cv didn't really optimize his fighters um that much and really uh kind of use them to help his team spot and the akatsuki as you see right here we're trying to protect that opening our Akatsuki ends up going around but we help defend our our destroyer anyway and uh, kind of protect that whole area i really hope they kind of change up what those fighters actually do because it feels good being able to defend um defend your team with those but uh it really i, I want to feel like i can do more with them Hon honestly it feels more like just a spotting mechanic i mean the defense is kind of there and i know they're kind of working on some stuff but i would like to really be able to defend my team a tad more defend my dds a tad more and this is when the carpet bombs kind of shine the damage I found to be pretty sick on uh, these with the right pen and everything. And a long flat top. <laughs> Not too bad as we missed a couple of those. Fighter takes them out. And, uh, some of us out. But we were able to use our, our boost correctly. And I think we got really lucky too that his um, his fighter just died right there. Again, completely <laughs> whip. Again, this is after I played a bunch of Ranger games. Alright, don't make fun of me. Uh, but uh, it does take a tad, uh, so I would definitely, if you have gotten the Royal Navy CVs um, or any of the CVs, I would. There's nothing wrong with playing some co-op games and just getting used to aiming and setting up against ships because you definitely want to get used to those and then getting those drops right on top. So a nice little 3k drop and a fire. That's really what we want to do. And then we know that it's only one. We get four drops on these, assuming none of them get shot down. And there's our little defense right there. He tried to actually drop on us. Probably not the kill, but uh, that's fine if he wants to try to go for us. Uh, I mean, <laughs> one thing I did kind of, did find kind of funny, though, and maybe it's because our, uh, our uh, Akatsuki didn't want to get spotted, was he went all the way around the cap, which actually was kind of sketchy. I think he would have had to kill two of us, but if he would have killed me... Um, or uh, like the hide or something like that it may have been a loss um so trust me it's always worth going through the cap in most situations to stop the points um he probably would have gotten our team uh probably i don't even know 60 some extra bonus points just by doing that but it was funny how he went all the way around the edge never once went in it um, maybe he didn't want to set off to where the CV was. I just did think that was kind of funny. Again, uh, being a good boy CV, trying to protect our destroyer if we can. And I'm trying to see which one he's going to go in for. He doesn't really have much time anyway. And uh, overall, had a lot of fun. So I'm really enjoying the Furious. Again, you can pick it up in the arsenal um, as well as uh, pick it up in the arsenal as well as once the line is officially released you can play it there But I'm interested in what you guys think about the Royal Navy uh, CVs. Are you enjoying them? Um, and how are you enjoying their play style compared to the other ones? I'm, I'm liking that there's different play styles within the class and this one I've been having a lot more fun I'm playing the Ranger right now uh, the tier 6 USN as well as um, the Furious on this account, so I'm enjoying the Furious more. I think it just has a little bit better of a damage output and really just overall more fun to play. But uh, a nice little comeback win too. Kind of want to show you guys that and want to see what you guys are thinking of the Royal Navy CVs. I am quite enjoying them actually. So working on our way and I think uh, we will end up getting the Implacable um, down the road. And uh, and once we get that, then we'll be able to do a video on that as well. But I'm interested in what you guys think. A nice little game right there though. Some good damage, some good kills, and just a decent amount of XP as well. Um, 1800 uh, base XP will definitely take that. I'm even noticing that the Furious does pretty well against top tier, even tier 8s. Uh, I've been having some 100k games even being bottom tiered. So where I've noticed other ships, other CVs uh, tend to have a tough time against it. Just picking the right targets is really, really important. But anyways, guys, I wanted to show you guys a pretty good game, pretty good comeback, and some fun Furious gameplay. But anyways, guys, that's it for me. If you guys enjoyed this video, remember to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.